وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A questioner asked when is ikhtilaf in the religion regarded as good and acceptable Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in I think there are two questions here in one. It's a very good question. The first question is, when is ikhtilaf regarded as good? And the second question really is, when is ikhtilaf regarded as acceptable? First of all, we need to understand that there are two types of ikhtilaf. There is ikhtilaf tanawur. There is complementary differing, where the, the essence of that differing is not contradictory. For example, when we talk about the hablullah, the rope of Allah. Some people said the rope of Allah is the Quran. Some said the rope of Allah is Islam. Some said the rope of Allah is the Sunnah. In reality, those are all complementary. They're not contradictory. So the ikhtilaf, which is complementary, which is what we call tanawur, it is lots of different types of things which all go together. They all work together. That is something good. And then you have ikhtilaf, which is tadad, which is contradictory. And some people don't use the word ikhtilaf, by the way, for these two things. They use different words. But in any case, there is ikhtilaf, which is tadad, which is contradictory. And the ikhtilaf, which is contradictory, is never something good. There is nothing good about ikhtilaf, which is contradictory. And Allah Azza never praised differing among people in that which is contradictory. Allah Azza wa never praised it, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi never praised it. However, the levels of acceptability of ikhtilaf, ikhtilaf is a reality. Ikhtilaf, tabad, contradictory differences are a reality. That is the reality of what we are living in, that there are contradictory differences. There are contradictions, there are differences, there are disagreements, that is a reality. Some of those disagreements are more acceptable than others. None of them are good if they differ, uh, if they contradict each other, there's nothing good about it. But some of them are acceptable and some of them are unacceptable. Let me give you a simple example. Differing over whether Allah has names and attributes is not acceptable under any circumstances. Differing about whether you keep your finger pointing straight in the tashahud or whether you move it or whether you lift it for la ilaha illallah and put it down is certainly considerably more acceptable than, and I'm not saying good, but acceptable than the, uh, that which was mentioned before. Uh, ikhtilaf in matters where the matter returns back to ijtihad, it returns back to a matter of trying your best to come to the truth and there isn't really a clear evidence one way or the other. This is a kind of acceptable ikhtilaf, a kind of differing which is acceptable, even if it's not good, but it's something which is acceptable and it's something which should be respected and given its proper etiquettes. Uh, likewise, where the evidence on both sides is strong. Uh, for example, when we talk about how you pray, do you put your knees before your hands or your hands before your knees? Even though I believe there is a correct and a wrong uh, answer uh, to that, there is enough evidence on both sides in the way that they presented it that this is a kind of differing which is acceptable in the sense that we will give it its due respect when speaking about it. But the fact that ikhtilaf is acceptable doesn't mean that there isn't a right answer and a wrong answer. So I hope that has kind of given you a brief overview. This is something that we dealt with extensively in the uh, introductory module, the madkhal, the introduction or the foundations of, uh, of uh, fiqh and the issue of disagreement, al-khilaf wal ikhtilaf differing and disagreement. That was dealt with quite extensively, but it's just a sort of a little summary 
to help to answer your question. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.